Ever wondered how rice, a staple food for many, is harvested? Today we're diving into the compelling world of rice harvesting. This process, which has been honed over centuries, is of immense importance worldwide. It's a journey that begins in verdant fields, and ends in your dinner plate. Rice harvesting methods have evolved considerably over time. In many parts of the world, traditional manual methods still hold sway, where farmers wield sharp sickles to cut rice stalks under the baking sun. Yet in other regions, modern mechanized methods have taken root, with machines efficiently reaping, threshing, and winnowing the grain. But whether it's harvested by hand or machine, each grain of rice embodies the same labor of love and dedication. Each tiny kernel represents a story of growth, resilience, and transformation. In this video, we demystify the fascinating process of rice harvesting, taking you through each step in detail. So, let's embark on this journey together, unlocking the wonder of rice harvesting. The first step in harvesting rice is knowing when the crop is ready. It's all about timing when it comes to rice harvesting. The process begins when the rice plant exhibits certain telltale signs of maturity. The first and most visible indication is a change in color. As the grains ripen, the vibrant green of the rice field transforms into a sea of golden yellow. This color shift is a clear signal that the grains are nearing readiness. Next, we look at the grains themselves. They undergo a transformation as they mature, hardening from a soft, milky texture to a firm, solid state. When the grains reach this hardened stage, it's another indication that harvest time is drawing near. However, it's not just about spotting these signs. It's also about understanding why timing matters so much. Harvesting too early can result in grains that are underdeveloped and lacking in nutritional value. On the other hand, if you wait too long, you risk the grains shattering and falling to the ground, leading to significant grain loss. To maximize yield, it's important to strike that perfect balance, harvesting when the majority of grains have reached their peak maturity. This is where the art and science of farming come together, where a keen eye and years of experience play a crucial role. In essence, knowing when to harvest is not just the first step but also one of the most critical steps in the rice harvesting process. Harvesting at the right time is crucial to the success of the crop. Once the rice is ready to harvest, the next step is cutting the rice stalks. This step is crucial, as it marks the transition of the rice grains from the field to the storage, where they will be processed for consumption. There are two primary methods for cutting rice, manual and mechanized. The method used often depends on the scale of the farm and the available resources. Let's delve into each of these methods to better understand them. First, we have manual cutting. This method is often employed in smaller farms or in regions where modern machinery is not readily available or economical. Manual cutting involves the use of a traditional hand tool known as a sickle. This curved blade is swung with a practiced hand, slicing through the rice stalks near their base. It's a labor-intensive process requiring strength and endurance. But it's also a method steeped in tradition, connecting the farmer to the earth in a very tangible way. On the other end of the spectrum we have mechanized cutting. This method is commonly used in larger-scale farming operations where efficiency and speed are paramount. Here, a machine known as a combine harvester is used. The combine harvester is a marvel of modern technology. It cuts, threshes, and separates the rice grains from the stalks in one fell swoop. This method significantly reduces the labor and time required to harvest rice. Regardless of the method used, the result is the same. The rice stalks, heavy with grains, are cut from the field. The cut stalks, known as sheaves, are then bundled together. These bundles serve a dual purpose, they make transport easier and they also allow the rice to dry. Drying is an essential step in the rice harvesting process as it reduces the moisture content of the grain, making it suitable for storage and further processing. So whether it's a sickle in the hand of a skilled farmer or the rumble of a combine harvester, the cutting process is a vital step in bringing rice from the field to our tables. After cutting, the rice is bundled and left to dry. After the rice stalks are cut and dried, they undergo threshing and winnowing. These are two crucial steps in the rice harvesting process, where we transition from stalks to grains. So, let's delve into what exactly these steps entail. First up is threshing. Threshing is the process of separating the grains from the stalks. Traditionally, this was done manually with farmers using a flail, a simple tool consisting of two pieces of wood connected by a short chain or leather thong. The stalks of rice would be spread out on a flat surface, and the flail would be swung down onto them, breaking the grains free from the stalks. 
In today's modern age, machines have largely replaced manual labor, and threshing is no exception. A mechanized thresher works on the same principle, but does the job much faster and more efficiently. The cut stalks are fed into the machine, which beats or rubs them to separate the grains. Now, let's move on to winnowing. Winnowing is the process of separating the rice grains from the chaff, the husks that surround each grain. In the past, farmers would toss the threshed grains into the air, and the wind would blow away the lighter chaff while the heavier grains would fall back down. Again, modern technology has made this process quicker and more efficient. A machine called a winnower essentially does the same thing but in a controlled environment. The threshed grains are fed into the winnower which uses a fan to blow away the chaff leaving just the grains. So through the processes of threshing and winnowing, we separate the grains from the stalks and the chaff, getting us one step closer to that bowl of rice. These steps have been integral parts of rice harvesting for centuries, and although the methods have evolved, the principles remain the same. At this point, we have our harvested rice, but it's not quite ready to eat yet. The final steps in the rice harvesting process are milling and polishing. Now let's dive into the details. Milling is a crucial step that transforms the harvested patty into edible rice. This process involves removing the outer husk or hull from the rice grain. The husk is tough and inedible, but it protects the grain during growth, so it's served its purpose by the time we get to milling. To achieve this, machines known as hullers or huskers are used. These machines apply mechanical force to the patty, either through abrasion or through more direct means like impacting or shearing. The result? The husk is effectively removed, revealing the grain or what we call brown rice. But we're not done yet. Though brown rice is perfectly edible, most people prefer their rice white. And that's where polishing comes in. Polishing is the process of removing the bran layer from the brown rice. This bran layer, which is a thin coating over the grain, gives the rice its brown color. It's filled with nutrients but also has a distinct taste that not everyone enjoys. To remove this layer, the rice goes through a machine called a polisher. This machine uses friction to gently rub off the bran layer without damaging the grain underneath. The rice is often sprayed with water during this process to prevent overheating and to help remove any remaining bran. What emerges from the other end of the polisher is the white rice that we're all familiar with. It's clean, shiny, and ready to be cooked into a delightful meal. Both milling and polishing are carefully controlled processes. They need to be done just right to ensure that the rice is not damaged and that it retains its nutritional value. And there you have it. From field to table, that's how rice is harvested. So, let's recap the journey of rice from the field to your plate. It all starts with knowing when the rice is ready to harvest. This crucial stage requires a keen eye and a deep understanding of the rice plant's life cycle. Harvesting too early or too late can greatly affect the quality and yield of the crop. The next step is cutting the rice. This involves using either traditional methods like a sickle or modern machinery, depending on the scale of the operation. The cut stalks are then bundled and left to dry, which allows the grains to harden and reduces the moisture content, making the next steps easier. Once dry, the rice undergoes threshing and winnowing. Threshing separates the grain from the stalk, while winnowing removes the chaff from the grain. These processes are vital in ensuring that only the pure grain makes it to the next step. The final steps are milling and polishing. Milling removes the outer husk and bran layers from the grain, while polishing gives it that distinctive shine. These steps transform the raw grain into the rice we recognize on our plates. Each of these steps is essential in ensuring a successful rice harvest. They require a blend of traditional knowledge, modern techniques, and a lot of hard work. Next time you enjoy a bowl of rice, you'll know the hard work and intricate process that went into harvesting it.